12 and 2. Genesis 12 and 2. Amen. Genesis 12 and 2. Amen. We do give God honor for God being in that, for God being here. We do give unto our apostle and our mother, or the baker, all the ministers, elders, saints, and friends. Amen. God bless you. Give me Elder Bill's self, Elder Bill's self. God bless you. It was so good in your Christmas attire. Thank you for once again choosing to be with us. And we're going to stick with the same thing we were talking about last week. We're going to the next scripture. And I want you to see what God says. He took Abram, he said, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Somebody says he'll make thy name great. He'll make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be a blessing. Look, 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 look. We're going to preach from this. He will make your name great. Uh, take your name, he will make your name great. He will make your name. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It is truly an honor and a blessing to be here. And I want to tell everyone in advance, you know, happy Merry Christmas and, and God bless you during these times. Amen. And y'all know what I say every year. The only thing I want you to be careful of is make sure that, one, that you check on people who, for this time of year, is a rough time. Amen? And also make sure you do not go into debt buying things. Remember, it is, if you're going to make it Jesus' birthday, which is not really his birthday, but if you're going to make it his birthday, remember, don't go no more broke spending on stuff for everybody else. He got very quiet on that. I said, my son, in a minute, it's Jesus' birthday now. Yeah. It's Jesus' birthday now. I'm allowed to give you anything. I'm giving you something because I want to be a blessing to you, but but it's Jesus' birthday now. Yes, it is. And so that's why we will make sure we come inside here. We got anything, we're going to give him a praise. Amen. 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 Young people, that's what I tell you. You guys open up gifts for stuff that you know you don't deserve. That's right. I don't deserve. Uh, we don't deserve anything that we get a lot of times, and that's why it's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's getting what you don't deserve, amen? amen. If I got what I work for, it's not a blessing. That's right. That's right, right yo. No, no, no. You're going to get what you don't deserve, amen? That's right. And be thankful for it. It's a blessing, amen? So he will make your name great. Look, 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 look. God tells Abram that he will bless him. I, I like what God said. That he said, look, I'm going to bless you. There is nothing that can compare to the blessing of God. See, the blessings of the Lord are well-producing and do not have any negative side effects associated with them. There are sometimes that people can give you a blessing and there are strings attached. There are sometimes that people want to give a certain thing to you and there are, are, are caveats attached to that. But the Bible says that his blessings have no negative side effects associated with them. I love it in the book of Proverbs where it says in Proverbs 20, 10 and 22, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. I love that. That it makes me rich and it adds no sorrow. And so therefore, whatever God has to give to me is going to bless me with no negative side effects. Somebody say amen. amen. The blessing of the Lord it brings protection. Now, if you ever want a scripture to read over your children, a scripture to read over yourself before you leave out of the house, in number 6 and 24, it gives a blessing that the Bible says that Aaron gives to the people. And the first thing he says in 6 and 24 is, the Lord bless and keep you. Now to keep you means to protect you. Right. Uh, God says I'm going to keep you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you from danger. It means that God not only blesses but he also protects what he blesses. I don't want to walk in blessings without walking in protection. Amen. I don't want to be blessed and not protected. And I want to be covered by God so that I don't have to fear what the enemy will do to me as a result of his jealousy for me being blessed. Because if you are blessed, the devil gets jealous. If you are favored by God, he gets jealous. And so God says, you know what? I want to make sure you know that not only would I bless you, but I'm going to also keep you. And the blessing of the Lord is his grace. Somebody say grace. Right. Number 6 and 24 says, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. It is a blessing for God to be gracious to you. It's a blessing for God to be gracious to you. Because without the grace of God, no amount of wealth or prosperity would matter. 
It does not matter how much you have, how much you have attained in your life without God's grace, none of it will matter. The Amplified Version describes gracious as surrounding you with love and kindness. He gives me what I need, that is love, and not what I deserve with his judgment. Oh, I deserve the judgment of God. I deserve for God to make me pay for what I did. But he says, I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you what you need. And what we need is his grace and his love. The blessing of the Lord is his acceptance as his own. Numbers 6 and 26 says, the Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you. To lift up his countenance is to look at us with divine approval. Now, in spite of how far we are, God can choose to view us with approval. He can choose to look at us and say, you know what, I know that you're messed up, but I'm going to approve of you anyway. It doesn't make sense, but he is God, and he can do whatever he wants to do. He chooses to accept us as his people. Now, have you ever begin to think about, Lord, why would you call somebody like me? Because the Bible says we did not call him. The Bible says that we did not, we, we, he, he called us. That, that we did not choose him. The Bible says he chose us. Am I right inside of here? And so God says sometimes you will wonder, Lord, why would you choose somebody like me? Why would you begin to work with somebody like me? And the blessing of the Lord is his peace. Somebody say peace. peace. Number 6 and 27 says, and, the, and he give you peace. It's amazing that God can give us peace. The world has so many ways of how to achieve peace. If you do this, you can achieve peace. You can attain peace. But the Bible says that God gives it to us. Right. He gives it to us. And that is not, that is one of the blessings of the Lord. And it is peace. Can I preach to you real quick? Peace, peace is not God setting the storm in your life. That's right. Come on, well done. Peace is not God making things go right in your life. That's not the peace of God. The peace of God is when even though you are in a storm, you still got your mind. That's right. Oh, I'm a piece of myself inside of here. Even though you are, things are going crazy all around you, and I still got peace in my mind. Have you ever begin to have a piece of God and look at someone else and say, you know what? I know that you're going through, and you let this around you begin to mess you up. But the reason I can still praise, the reason I still have my mind, is not because God changed the situation. God decided to give me peace. And though I'm going through, I still have peace. Though things are going down around me, I still have peace. To be blessed with sorrow, with any sorrow, no protection, no grace, no acceptance, and no peace is no blessing at all. All right, that's right. I don't want to be blessed and not have uh, 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 have any sorrow, have no protection, no grace, no acceptance, no peace. When God blesses you, He blesses you completely. This is what God, He promised Abram and his seed. He has also promised Abram to be blessed with a great name. Somebody say a great name. A great name. Let me tell you something. You need a great name. Yeah. Yeah. I know we don't talk about this a lot. We don't want to speak on this. But you need a great name. Right. You need God to do a thing that's out of your life. God made sure that Abram's name lived longer than he did. Yeah. We're talking about the need for a great name. Abraham's name is indeed great as he is one of the most referenced Old Testament figures to appear in the New Testament. Uh, he has talked about plenty of times in the the scriptures, second only to Moses. Why is this? Because Abraham was an example to every believer about the need for two things. Those are faith and obedience. Yeah, man. Faith and obedience. It don't matter if you have believe in God, but you're not going to obey. That's right. Uh, it's not good to obey and not believe. That's right. Oh, I preach this inside of here. Abraham would not have been mentioned at all if it were not for his faith and his obedience. In Hebrews 11 and 8, I love this. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Somebody say obey. Obey. Oh, by faith, Abraham obeyed. He did not just obey. The Bible says he believed in God. And by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. Heritage, he went out not knowing where he was going. God promised to make Abraham's name great, but Abraham had to have the faith and he had to obey. Somebody say, Obey. Okay. Our name will be known by how much faith we have in God and how quick we are to obey Him. I don't want to be.
be that person anymore. I know we preached it time and time again, and we had this testimony all the time that I ran and I ran. I tried my best to obey God, and I finally obeyed. Baby, your name will never be great if that's your testimony all the time. All right. You get one time and it'll be your testimony. After a while, when you take it, how good God is, it is time to stop running and say, Lord, I will obey. I will do what you tell me to do. Baby, those are baby testimonies. Yes. And I did not believe God. I did not want to do what God wanted me to do. And it took me a long time to finally obey what God told me to do. I have learned that I have got to grow up from that. I'm going to preach about three or four of y'all inside of here. Because I have to preach to myself on that. That it is not a good testimony to tell somebody it took me years to submit to God. It's not a good testimony to tell somebody it took me weeks or months to retweet or submit to God. I want to be known that when God says go, I go. When God says stay, I stay. When God says do, I do. I want to be a vessel that does not talk back to the master. I don't want to be a servant who's going to say always to the master what I don't want to do. And can you call somebody else? But I want to be known as a great man of God because I am quick to obey God. Not because I can preach. Not because I'm anointed. Not because I can sing. Not because I got power. But I want to be great because I, when God tells me to do something, I say yes, Lord. And I'm preaching to me. And if I'm hearing you, you can say amen too. But I want to be known as somebody that when God speaks, I believe and I obey. Obey. Okay. Hallelujah. Many people believe that God is great. But they need to see the people of God reveal his greatness right. and their ability to have faith and obey him when it doesn't make sense. You see, they already know God is great. The problem is they need to see us reveal his greatness by our faith in him and our obedience to him. That's what makes our name great, our faith and our obedience to a great God. If our name was great or honored, I want to preach this and I'm going to take my time on this and even online, I want y'all to know what I'm about to say when I say this. If our name was great, if it was honored, we wouldn't have to use his name as a qualifier so often. I didn't want to hear this. Y'all didn't want to hear this one, but it's the truth. If our name was already great, we wouldn't have to use his name as a qualifier so often. Come on, what am I saying? I'm wary of people that say God said too often. Uh -huh. I'm kind of wary when people say God said all the time. For one, I'm not sure that God is always talking to them. And you know, I always should start talking to them about people, other people so much. You know when God talks to me, it's about me and my need for correction. It's not usually about somebody else. Now, he does tell me things for somebody else. But usually when I'm when he's talking to me, he's talking to me. Right. About me. About me. Too often we use God said so that people will take us more seriously. That's right. Don't preach this out of house to the people of God. I'm going to give you something to think about, you know, in between this service and the next service. So too often we say God says so that people will take us more seriously. Be careful with God said. That's right. Because it's a dangerous thing to speak in the name of God and be wrong. It's very dangerous to say God said and be wrong. That's right. Oh, man, I know we in the apostolic move. I know we in the charismatic move. We feel like God's talking to us all the time. We feel like God's always speaking to us and give me a word for somebody. Give me a word for somebody. We better be careful when we say God said all the time. Amen. In Jeremiah 14 and 13, it says, then I said, it said, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say to them, You shall not see the sword, you nor shall you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. And the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. All right, come on, Elder. I did not send them, nor did I command them to speak to them, That's right. command them, or even speak to them. They are prophesying to you a lying dish, uh -huh. worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. Look at what it said. It's because I want y'all to hear something. Because you right now, right now you said, Lord, that person said this and they were evil and they were messed up. No, 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 no. The Bible says that they were at the deceit of their own minds. Let's come back to that because the prophets were speaking good things, but they were not speaking God things. They were prophesying, look, you will not see the sword. You will not see famine. It will not hit your heart. It will not happen. These things will not come to you. And God said, I didn't send you. That's right. That was not. Can I be real with y'all? Sometimes God won't tell you that you better go through. That's right. And I don't care how many prophets you get to tell you that I'm not going 
going through. No, 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 you will go through. You going. Yes, you going. Sometimes bad things will happen to good people. That's right. Oh, I'm going to preach this inside here. Sometimes, I don't care how many problems you get, the one problem that said that God said, no, no, you're going to face a lot in your life right now. Right now. And we don't want to hear it. So we find somebody who's going to reverse it and say, no, it's not going to happen. I tell you, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. He says they were not doing this on purpose, though. Well, the Bible says, look at the scripture. He said the text states that they were speaking from the deceit of their own mind. That's right. They were deceived by what they wanted God to say and not listening to God. Amen. Can I preach about five y'all? Praise the name. If you want it bad enough and you keep praying, you're going to hear it. If you want it bad enough, and you keep praying about it, yes, after a while, you're going to hear what you want to hear. You will hear it. Oh, you don't want to hear that one. We don't like that one. I'm going to tell you the truth. That you have been deceived in your own mind. And our minds are very powerful. Yeah. It's one of the most powerful things under God, a person's mind. That's why God says, even when I save you, I'm going to preach this thing. Even when you get saved and full with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, feel and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you can be saved without a renewed mind. Yeah. Ah, the, the, the salvation, the Holy Ghost gives you the ability now to begin to have your mind renewed. But so often, our Deceitful, and we are hearing what we want to hear and not hearing what God said. See, it is okay to say sometimes, I feel inspired to say this, or I am not sure if this is God, but please pray on this. It is better to say, I am not sure than to speak for God and be wrong. That's right. Amen. Learn that. I am learning it is better to say, I'm not sure. Go home and pray on this. I feel inspired to tell you this. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure this is God, but I want you to pray about this day. It is better to say that than to, than to say God said and be wrong. That's right. That's right. Jeremiah 14 and 15, it says, Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, although I did not send them, and who say sword and famine shall not come upon the land. By sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. That was God said. He said, just because you're saying it's not going to happen, I'm going to make sure it happens to you. If our name was made great by God, people would have more trust in what we say without a qualifier. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to preach a thing to the people of God right now that we got to hear. That we got to change before we go to 2022. That's right. If our name was made great by God, people would have more trust in what we say without a qualifier. That's right. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There is a difference between counsel and prophecy. Just because somebody tells you something, I mean it was prophecy. Sometimes it's counsel. Get quiet in the house. Because good counsel is good advice from a reliable source. It does not mean that they are always right. But their wisdom is the least worth hearing. I thank God for my father, but my father was sometimes when we would talk, he gave me counsel, and then sometimes I say, Well, Pop, they just say the Lord. And God said, He said, No, God didn't say that, but I'm giving you advice right. on that. Amen. That's right. It's okay to say that. Proverbs is a good book of counsel. Yes, it is. It is counsel. I tell y'all, don't live your whole life on Proverbs. Amen. Don't, 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 don't sit there and say, Well, that is all that is going to happen 100% of the time. These are some principles that Proverbs are not 100% effective. And in every circumstance. Amen. That is not why it was written. Amen. See, this is why we have to say the word of God. The Bible says Proverbs was written, if you research, it was written as advice to people who will become rulers. He's talking to princes who will begin to grow up and rule over the nation. So he's telling them about good advice. It's not going to work 100% of the time. Y'all heard me say it before. Sometimes people have raised up their child to train their child in the way they should go, and they need to part. That's right. That's right. Amen. Real talk. Amen. Yes. Real talk. Yes. But what he will say is that in most cases, they won't. Yes. And sometimes we, I saw somebody that was saying, well, my child has not come to God. I said, well, the Bible says when he is old. When he's old. He ain't old yet. That's right, Elder. Help us out. Y'all better somebody give God a praise for that. He's old yet. He ain't old yet. You want them to let you train them up and they're 21 years old. You want them to have like they say, take the Bible for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when they are old, they will not depart from you. Sometimes they leave and they come right back to what God wants them to do. Now, 
as that that's your testimony, baby, that's my testimony. I was raised right here in this house. I was a drug of the church. Every time the church door was open, y'all don't even know that. But we had church on Monday night and Wednesday night. Y'all didn't hear me. Sunday morning, 3 o'clock service, and then y'all back on the bus and come back down here for 7 o'clock service. All that prayer, all that prayer we had in our house, but yet I still found myself in the clubs. I still found myself doing stuff I should not have been doing, but I remember the teaching that God had in my life, and that principle is worth for me. Most cases they can be trusted, but there are some people because they have choice, they're not gonna come back. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. They have choice. Come on. Right. Why do we trust Proverbs then? Because okay. the source is Solomon. And the reason why we trust Solomon, because his name is great because of the wisdom that God gave him. Uh-huh. And so because God gave him the wisdom, we can trust what he said. Therefore, he didn't have to qualify every proverb by saying, Thus says the Lord. Right. Go back and read it. How many times say thus says the Lord? He doesn't qualify with that because we knew how wise he was. There are some people that don't have to tell me, thus says the Lord, for me to take them seriously. I'm not being real. That's right, y'all. Some of y'all ain't got to say it. You ain't got to right. say, thus says the Lord, for me to take you seriously. That's right. I know who you are as a person. Amen. And I respect the wisdom of your counsel. Yeah. You ain't got to always say, well, Pastor, thus says the Lord. No, 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 no. I know you. That's right. I know that you pray. Sometimes you ain't got time to go consecrate for a whole year. 
here to give somebody an answer. They want somebody who's already been praying, somebody who's already been seeking God, and they say, you know what, I know the kind of person that you are, and if you give me some advice, I'm going to listen to it. The Bible says that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were intelligent people, that when they came to the kingdom, guess what, they were advisors to the king, y'all. They were people who could advise the king because of the life that they lived, and God made their names great. Yes, so what we got to do is allow God to make your name great. Amen. It is God's desire to make our name great because we carry his thing, don't we? Amen. We carry his thing. We, we, we carry him. Most of the people that we interact with already believe in God and see him as great. Amen. How many of y'all around people who don't believe in God? Most of us around people who believe in God. We might know one or two people who may be atheists. Uh, most of the time they're not atheists. They're just agnostic. They just have questions. But most of us around people who already believe in God. So, so, so their problem is that they don't believe in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. True enough. We get mad. We say, you know, you don't believe in God. No, no, no. I believe in God. I don't believe in you. That's right. And they don't see us as being great. Therefore, they don't want to join the church. Amen. How many times? I'm going to preach this. We need to hear this. I'm going to move on. But, but how often do you hear people say, I believe in God, but I don't like organized religion? Amen. I don't believe in God, but I don't go to church. That's right. You know why they say that? Now, sometimes it's just silent. I'll go ahead and say that. Because it's uncommitted. It's the truth now. Amen. It's just uncommitted. They don't want to do But also, sometimes, they don't see God in us. That's right. Yeah. And they believe in Him. But they say, I don't believe in Him. I know His name is great. That's right. I have seen people who are not even saved who won't say certain curses. Well, you don't know what I'm talking about because they have God's name inside of them. And they'll say everything else but that. But that. Because they believe his name is great. That's right. But yet, when it comes down to people of God, do they see us as being great? Can right. I, I'm going to preach on the wall. Do you remember back, you know, and I believe that some of us still feel the same way. I remember back when we were in church, there were certain people you didn't play with. That's right. Even when we grow up, there were certain people that mother so and so was around, everybody got quiet. Y'all better get in. And, and pastor so and so was around, we got quiet. We would turn our music down even past in a church. Y'all better get in. Because we saw something in them. And we say, you know, well, you shouldn't be worshiping that person. I didn't worship the person, but I knew something was on them. And God had made their name so great, I had to respect them because of what God did. Amen. Let me be quiet this time, baby. Therefore, they don't want to join us sometimes because they don't see it with us. We should have a name, uh, a great name in terms of integrity. Somebody say integrity. Integrity. Ephesians 5 and 15 says, look carefully then how you walk. I love this. Not as unwise, but wise. Wow. Sometimes as Christians, we're so foolish. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. I'm going to have a church next Sunday. I'm going to preach this again. Sometimes we, we are so foolish. We act so crazy around unsaved people. We really let our hair down all the time. I tell people all the time, we say, well, Pastor, why well, won't you come and hang out? Do this? I said, because I'm not going to let my hair down around y'all. That's right. Amen. I'm not going to act a certain way around. I don't get comfortable. I'm not get comfortable around people like that. Come on, yeah. And I know people say, well, you got to be better. Well, you know, these pastors over here, they do this and they do that. I'm not that comfortable because I got to walk carefully and be wise and not be unwise. That's right. Yeah. There's certain sides of me that you will never see. Never. Deal with it. It's going to happen. Yeah. I'm never going to show you certain sides of myself. That's right. Lord's will, I am not because I know I got to walk as far as a person who is wise. That's right. Because even if, hear me, even if you may be cool with seeing that side, you say, well, Pastor still saying that he still this and he still that. Somebody else may be there and it may offend them. And when you are truly serious about God, it's not about me anymore, not about my freedom, not about what I can do, but it's about their soul that I don't want to offend them. That's right, that's right. The Bible says we cannot take our freedom so loosely. That's right. The way we begin to hurt somebody else and, and throw them off course. Everybody's not strong. Everybody's not there. Everybody's not yet in the world when it should be in the world. So therefore, I gotta walk carefully. On vacation, I walk here. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Whenever I'm not anybody, I walk carefully. I don't want to be unwise. Amen. People have made decisions that have messed up their whole ministry because they're unwise. Amen. They still say, they just stupid sometimes. Yeah. You preach the truth right now. Yeah, really quiet on that one. We can act stupid sometimes. Yes, Amen. Yeah, I said it. It's true. 
Same people can be stupid sometimes. Amen. 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 Not listening to God, not hearing what God say, and do what we want to do sometimes. Amen. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Yes, are. Therefore, do not let us be, do not be foolish. The Bible says, right? Amen. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. We will be known by what we do and how we act among the unbelievers and the uncommitted. Yes. I'm gonna be known by that. That's right. I'm gonna be known by how I behave among unbelievers. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm gonna be known by how I act among unbelievers. That's right. I'm gonna be known that kind of person. I don't want you, if you go to my job and I was just blessed, I thank God I was able to do commencement address and, and, and down there, and I was chosen, but I said, you know, I wouldn't want to do it. I said, Lord, but God said, no, it's an honor. And I had someone who wasn't even saved. Oh, yeah. Text my wife to tell me to tell Daniel. Said that this reason that he's been called for this, he's gonna be able to touch people that we would never even touch before. She won't even say, but because they see how I walk among them, y'all hey, better get me. They say yeah. walk. They're not even a walk. I, I believe she is. I believe that she's a believer in God. But she's a believer. But maybe not the way we think about Holy Ghost and all those things. But you know, even if she may be Holy Ghost spirit. But even that, she knew there was something about us, about me. They said, you're going to be able to minister to people. God says we have got to get to a place that we walk in a way that the unbelievers and the uncommitted will know that, hey, that's a person of God. That's a woman, a man of God. Yeah. Take this yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I said this. I got to move on. I, I, I said this. That one of the worst things my mama always did when she said, you ain't never been a kid. All right. She said, leave count alone sometimes. And you always don't count all the time. said, because you were never a child. You didn't like cartoons. You wanted to be grown your whole life. I remember, I remember, I never forget my, my underbag. I remember when I was in, probably in like the second or third grade. I wanted a briefcase to take to school, not a boot bag. All right now. And she wouldn't find me a briefcase. Seriously, wouldn't find me a briefcase and a blazer to wear to school first day of school. All right. Come on now. And I knew one thing about it when I was a kid, why I didn't like being a kid, is because they don't take kids children seriously. And we should, but we don't. That's right, we should. Can I tell you one thing I learned as a man of God? I don't want to be taken seriously. Amen. I don't mean that you gotta bow down to me all the time. No, no, no. I don't want to be taken seriously. That you look at me and you say, you know what? That's a man of God. Amen. You should want to be at least taken seriously. That's right. Can I tell you why? Because if people don't take you seriously, you are going to call them to be destroyed. Amen. Amen. Come on, yeah. Can I give you an example? The Bible says that everything that God came to Lot with those angels and told Lot, you need to get you and your family and get out of Sodom. Get out of Sodom. He said, I'm going to destroy this place. But because at Lot tried to tell his friends, look, God will destroy the Sodom. He's going to destroy this place. You got to go. You got to get out of here. But guess what? Because he did not live a certain life before them, they did not take him serious. The Bible said they saw him as somebody who had been drinking, as a foolish person, and they all died because nobody took him serious. That's why, people of God, I'm going to preach this thing right now. We got to make sure that, yes, I'm a human. I can still have fun. I believe in having fun. I'm not always going to be speaking in tongues every minute that I'm out there among people, but when I say something, I want you to take me serious. I don't want you to say, you know, he's nobody. He's talking food. He's unwise. I want you to take me at least. It can cost somebody their life. Yes, Lord. Come on, Elder. Amen. Oh, it cost somebody their life. If we want our name to be great, we gotta walk in the greatness of somebody say integrity. Integrity. We should Amen. all have a we should all have a great name in terms of power. Somebody say power. Power. First Corinthians twelve and two says, "Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God has appointed. Look at this in the church. Somebody say in the church." First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then it says miracles, then gifts of helping, uh, I'm sorry, healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. God did not just give us these gifts for the sake of us having a good church. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Come on, Come on, Come on now. And it's not why he gave so y'all have a good church. Alright. He didn't give it to us so we can have good church structure. Amen. That's the only reason he gave it to him. He Come said, on. I need to give you apostles and, and pastors and, so y'all can have good church structure. He did it for the church to manifest the power of God. Look at this. Prophecy, miracles, healing, and tongues. They are all outward gifts. Only there to show God's power. Yeah. Amen. 
Because even if they don't believe you, so the Bible, if you prophesy something and it comes to pass, they're going to say, you know what? I don't even know who she is, but there's going to be some power inside of her life. That's right. That is what it's there for. Look at this. Jesus said in John 4 48. So Jesus answered to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And the words that? Can I ask you a question? Why should they believe? All right. Why should you? If you don't see signs and wonders. Come on. Now we've been saved for a long time. All right. And we be convinced now. But what about somebody who's not convinced yet? Mm-hmm. How they gonna believe that God is real? How they gonna see God? You know what tell them to do? Go home and pray. He'll show himself to you. Really? All right. Come on. Really? Jesus said, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Give me, let me tell you why. They are not spiritual, so they can only recognize the spiritual when it's revealed in the natural. Yeah. You see, when Ella Scott tells me something, I can feel it being confirmed in my spirit. Right. I'm a spiritual being. That's so he right. speaks a word to me and yeah. stirs something inside of yeah. me. I don't have to see anything because I'm spiritual. But if I'm not spiritual, y'all gonna hear me. Yeah. Then he has to say, Lord, show him a sign. With this one. That's what the Bible says. So told Gideon. Gideon was spiritual. So he can go out. You're going to fight against these people. Just when well, you're going to lead your people to victory. No, so Gideon did. He said, Look, I'm going to show me a sign, Lord. I'm going to put out this, 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 this lambskin. This is this, uh, this, the sheep on the ground. He said, Tomorrow, if the sheep is wet and the lion is dry, you talking to it. All right. He said, Okay, okay that, that's work, but that's going to be something else. Tomorrow, I'm going to put out the, 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 the Again, and if the sheep is wet, the sheep is dry, and the lion is wet, then you, you talking to him. All right. You know why? He needed to see a sign. He was not ready to stake everything he believed without seeing a sign from God. They are spiritual. They need to. They are not spiritual. They are not spiritual. They need to see the spiritual revealed in the natural. Thus, the need for somebody to say miracles. That's why I got so excited this morning because they did not break the boy's feet. Real quickly, 
We didn't pay for miracles this year. Yes, right. Not for us. Because I believe. Yes, right. I'm going to change my, I'm going to change my, uh, I'm going to change my, I'm going to change my, my prayer. I'm going to say, Lord, you know, I believe you can do this. Yes, come on. But for them. For them. Yes, Lord. For their sake. For their sake. Oh, Lord, I believe that you can heal God. Yes. I believe you can make a way. I know that. I'm not trying to pray as though you're putting you on trial. And if you don't do it, I'm not going to believe. I know you can do it. But, Lord, for their sake. Yes. Can you begin to pray for your family sometimes and say, Lord, I know you can do it. I in this thing. But Lord, for their sake, Lord, a miracle happen for their sake. It's not. Oh, no. it's not. We should have a great name in terms of love. Somebody say love. love. First Corinthians 13 and 1. I love this one because this is what we got to hear the church. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, why? Think you got a tongue on you, don't you? Come on. Okay. Okay. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have all prophetic powers, yeah. now you know, now we get master prophets now. Right, right now. If I'm going to have prophetic powers and, and understand all mysteries, don't nothing stump me in the Bible. Nothing confuses me. Everything, I know all mysteries of God. And I have all knowledge. And I have all faith. So as to remove mountains, but have my love, he says, nothing. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that God says you can have all, you can be so powerful, but not be, not have love? He said, nothing. And I preach this to you real quick. The church should be identified by love. Come on, right. We we want sometimes to be identified by all the other things, and we need power. We need those things, but we should also be identified by our love. love. Right. It should be known the place of love. Jesus said that his disciples would not be known by their power, but by their love. By, by love. this, you all men know that you are my disciple by the love that you have one for another. Yes, right. And love is what love does. Okay. Amen. I'm going to give you a principle. I'm going to tell you why. There's certain things I did not want to do in the house of God. And I this kind of a departure for how I saw things, but I had to read the Bible. The Bible said it. In 1 John 3 and 16, by this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's good and see his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God love abide in him? There are times that you got to do more than pray. Sometimes you got to do more than pray. We just want to pray for everybody. But the Bible says, if you see your brother have need, and we close up our vows of compassion from him, you know, right go back to the, to the old response of reading. And how put a little doubt in us? Yes. So this is